Hey there, back again, BQ here with the King of the Mountain Radio YouTube channel, and welcome to the very first of a series of uh, events here where we're going to be talking about the Impact Live event. So this is the uh, Impact Live report, and I've got Kyle in the place to be. You may know Kyle from being a previous co-host on the King of the Mountain podcast. Now he's got his own gig, the Impact Heads Radio podcast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put his link in the subscription here. So when you're done listening to us, please go to the description and subscribe to his podcast. That's Impact Heads Radio. So what we're going to do here, we're not going to go move by move, match by match necessarily, but he is in the place to be. And we're going to talk about last night's August 4th Long Island show. And so you can hear it from the horse's mouth, not not Ryan Satin, not the dirt sheets, nothing like that. From the horse's mouth, we're going to talk about the live event what he experienced and what the show was like. Kyle, what is up, man? Good to have you back. Uh, I guess we could say back home, so to speak. You know what, man? I used to always say this at the beginning of every show, but you know, it means so much more now. BQ, you know what I'm about to say? I do. It feels good to be back, BQ. <laughs> totally feels good to be back. And ah, oh, man, uh, I'm just I'm shot today. Last night was crazy. The Impact Live show last night was totally off the chain. I had a blast, and do not let the the internet muckrakers fool you. There was plenty of people in there. That place was packed out. Uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't what you're gonna read online. It's not what Ryan Satin tells you. Not what Uncle Dave tells you. You're hearing it from the horse's mouth. I was there. The show was a blast. Beach. Tell us a little bit about the venue and what kind of what kind of building this was. Because in the past we've seen very empty, large venues that TNA was doing. This this was something a little bit different. You know what, man? I'm so glad that they're gonna run live events in small venues like this because it shows them like they're not just jumping into big arenas and then you know not being able to fill it out and. They're actually starting from the bottom and, you know, just slowly working their way up to the top, uh, just reestablishing uh, impact. And now, now the new GFW at this place last night, man, the Sports Center in St. James, Long Island, wasn't your typical venue. Uh, basically, is it's just this giant, giant like building where they have uh, just children's sports games. Uh, actually, during the wrestling show, on the whole other side of the building, there was a children's hockey game going on. So when you walk in there, there's like two. There's you go to the left and go towards the hockey game, or you go to the right and go to the Impact show. Uh, you know your usual claw games, arcade games, kids running around the whole the whole night. It looked like a laser tag kingdom, pretty much. It looked like a place you go take your kids to play laser tag. And uh, man, the, the place was packed out. There was people there, so many people there. Uh, my only thing I'd say is I wish the crowd was a little more, uh, you know, a little more alive, like with the. the I, I was trying to start chants the whole night, and some people, some people were jumping on, but you know the crowd wasn't so lively. But the the matches were great. I don't think it was a, a result of any of the the matches. All the wrestlers just tore the house down. The, sh the show was a blast, man. Uh, just the, the whole experience. Uh, as soon as I got there, right off the bat, <laughs> I guess the talent shared bathroom with the fans. So you just share in the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, man, uh, as soon as I got in there, uh, Santana from LAX, uh, then EC3 comes in low-key, and you just, it's so funny uh, sharing the bathroom with the talent. That was funny. Uh, just a good time, dude, just a good time. Uh, they had a nice intermission where you got to go, uh, you know, meet Eli Drake, take a picture with Eli Drake. I did, I had to, I caved. I'm actually pretty broke now, BQ. I spent all my money last night at the Impact Show, but it was well worth it. <laughs> no complaints on my end. So I want to talk about the matches here in a second, but you mentioned okay. the crowd. So was this Impact Zone-esque? And, I, and I, I don't want to trash the Impact Zone. I really don't. But was it similar to what we see on TV? Was it a little more energy than that? Uh, you know what? That's the big debate because the people there will tell you, oh, it's so much louder, but they edited them out. They added a lot of the noise out. On the show, uh, the mic doesn't pick everything up. Bada ba ba, yada yada yada. The crowd is packed, BQ. But like I said, uh, I wish they were more alive. Wish there were more chants. And I feel that way a lot of times when I'm watching the Impact show. But hey, man, you know what? They'll keep growing. The crowds will get larger, and the crowds will get rowdier. Crowds will get louder. 
They just got to keep doing what they're doing. And, I mean, there's just been so much progress ever since Anthem stepped in. They're actually turning the place into a profitable company, and that's something that people really don't understand. Wouldn't you agree with that? The average fan doesn't really get what they're doing. No, but we do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all that matters. But, man, the show was a blast. So the matches itself. Now, is it, was this kind of laid out similar to One Night Only where – the guys really got some time because for instance if you see Fala Ba and Mario Bokara on TV on Impact they're they usually job out within three minutes you see them on one night only they get a little more time w- what were these matches like was it w- was it more one night only was it more Impact yeah yeah no doubt I mean you know you just gotta remember that they're not filming television so they're going out there and it's just like going to see a local independent show or even a house show for whatever company the guys get to go out there and, you know, it's a little more loose. They have more freedom. They get, you know, more time in the matches to, you know, get more stuff in and really tell a story. And, dude, uh, Mario Bacara and uh, Fala Ba, the crowd was totally behind them. And what was so funny to me about that is LAX is just super over, man. There's People are going crazy for LAX. You got, like, white suburban guys dancing, throwing up gang signs. You know, LAX brings out the inner thug in everybody, I guess. And... Just they had the crowd in the palm of their hands, so you wouldn't even expect Mario uh, Bokura and Falaba to get any reaction from the crowd. But dude, the crowd was behind them, and they really loved Falaba. There were a ba chance throughout the whole match. It well, was cool to see the crowd totally split. Well, those guys are kind of local, right? Because they wrestle in oh, New yeah. Jersey. Oh yeah, yeah. See, there's a there's a thing people don't really notice. Uh, you know, the average fan, but. GFW has a working relationship with WrestlePro. That's a huge independent company here in the uh, New York, you know, uh, tri-state area. And a lot of their guys are uh, the the Falabas, the Mario Bokaras, the KMs, uh, Pat Buck. He's one of the owners of the company. And independent wrestling fans, uh, New York ones specifically and New Jersey, they'll know that whole crew is the PWS guys. PWS was a huge company out here. Uh, I used to catch their uh, TV show at like 5 in the morning after coming home from the bar on Saturday nights. Uh, So I was familiar with all these guys when they came into Impact when this relationship kicked off. So throughout the show, you saw a lot of these guys on the card. Uh, The show actually opened up with Pat Buck, the WrestlePro owner, going up against KM. And KM is one of those guys. So you can see them building the bridges and forming relationships, uh, you know, and hopefully that this is the start of the direction they're going and bouncing from territory to territory and just building bridges, you know? So they had a mer- merchandise stand there, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I, w- I bought the new uh, Impact, uh, you know, the new company logo shirt. It, it says GFW on the top. I saw when they first dropped those, it didn't have them there. So I, I got the updated shirt. Uh, you know, uh, that one guy that... <sighs> All right, he was the trucker in all the the broken segments, and then he was the pizza guy in the KM segment. You know that guy? Yeah, I talk to him on Twitter all the time. Yeah, he he sells the uh, merchandise. He's the guy that runs the merch booth. And uh, right. when I bought the shirt, you know, I smirked. I was like, hey, man, that, aren't you on the show a little bit? Just, you know, playing dumb. And uh, he's like, yeah, hey, you know, I was the pizza guy. He said it in that voice. And uh, I was like, oh, no, I remember – Something happened between you and Decay, didn't it? Didn't it? And he laughed, and he was like, "I'd like to think that that was Rosemary." <laughs> you know, but uh, <laughs> just, just you know, laughing with the guy. But it, you know, it, it's cool. You know, you see the the whole Impact crew out there. But so they ran, they ran the merchandise table, and dude, the, the merchandise table was hot. They definitely made a ton of money last night. And like geniuses during the intermission, they had Eli Drake at the at the merchandise table, uh, and it was. Just 10 bucks to go over there and take a picture with him and get an autograph. And the line was huge, man. I'd say almost the whole place got up on that line. So 10 bucks ahead, that's a whole ton of profit right there. And then, like, super geniuses after the show, BQ, after the main event, after the show, they made an announcement that JB came out, right? So he tells everybody. 20 bucks ahead, you get to come into the ring, take a picture in the ring. And they had like a photographer taking these nice pictures that printed out right there on the spot. The 20 bucks, you come in the ring and you get to take a picture with uh, the winning team of the main event, which we'll talk about later. That was uh, Moose, John Hennigan, and uh, Cowboy James Storm. So 
Come on, man. Do you think? Do you think I I would resist? <laughs> Come on, man. Like I I had to. I I had to. You think you think I would miss out on that? I had to get in the six sided ring. I dropped my twenty bucks. I went in there, took a picture with the boys, and it was a blast. But the whole entire place lined up for that. So you got to think twenty bucks ahead. They had to make some money last night, and you might read people online saying differently like trying to make it seem like oh this was a dead end show no turnout blah 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 they made a ton of money last night bq i'm telling you and those lax shirts were selling like hotcakes i I noticed that my buddy i was with was saying it. the lax shirts were everywhere people just kept buying them you know that is pretty genius and leave it up to jeff jarrett to say okay we may not get that many people at this show how can we you know how can we um profit and i went to a independent show i haven't really talked to you <laughs> too much lately but i went to an independent show about three weeks ago cody was there djz was there um uh, Don- donovan dijak mara fuji was there so what it was is we got we had cody Rhodes, and for 25 bucks we got to take a picture with them but it was like our cell phone picture and an autographed photo and i mean the whole place was lined up for this dude and then for djz and for mara fuji it was 10 bucks to take a photo with them, you know, and their lines were not that big only because everyone was in line for Cody. Um, no, no, but I, but it, I guess I got put on game a little bit watching this independent show and thinking, okay, you can't just charge admission. What else are you guys doing in here to take care of the wrestlers? And I started learning a little bit that there's those ins and outs you do within the show, uh, to be profitable. So that's, uh, that's that's inter- I mean that's interesting and that's genius actually to say hey the yeah, winner and, and also event. I'm forgetting throughout the whole show the entire show between every match JB came out and he had this this uh, in the beginning he had this big stack of VIP passes and then uh, you know they they brought them over to the merchandise table because initially he was passing them out to you know who could be the loudest you know trying to get the crowd rowdy the loudiest people were given free passes but then. They were selling the passes right at the merchandise table. So throughout the show, they're like, oh, they're going quick. Get your VIP passes right now. And, dude, every time every time he did that, you saw people go up and go to that merch table. And I can't imagine those passes were cheap. So they, they, they made a ton of profit last night, man, a whole lot of money. But the, the matches were great. It, it was well worth it. Uh, general admission was only 30 bucks. I had a blast. It was well worth my money. That's cool. So basically they took the people who paid the general admission and got those few extra bucks out of them, you know, VIP yeah. style. To... And some were picked for free. Whoever could be the loudest, that was going on a lot in the beginning. And then they were selling them throughout the show. What was it like seeing Taya and uh, John Hennigan? What were they like? Awesome, man. Uh, uh, she wrestled Sienna. Uh, that was a good match. Uh, I sent you some of that exclusive footage, including the post-match shenanigans. Uh, the crowd was liking her, man. Uh, and of course, J- John Hennigan, he's 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 very well known. He's wrestled all throughout the world in all types of promotions. I think because they weren't on TV, he was able to do these shows. But you read all these reports that Lucha Underground might not have another season moving forward. And I'm just hoping they're building a good relationship with him because, dude, he is just a phenomenal talent out there in the ring. Watching him, he's just – he's so crisp and smooth and his high flying is just – it's not over the top. What he does is just – I personally, man, I'm a huge fan and I think he would do great things for the company. But the crowd was loving him. It was uh, it was totally special getting to see him in that, uh, you know, live event, house show type format. It was special because it's not something that everybody could see. But we, we hooked up the listeners. You know, I, I got plenty of video. I sent you plenty. Uh, actually, listeners on my Instagram page, Impact Heads with a Z, one word. I have even more footage up on there. So go on my Instagram, check out all of that. But, dude, it, it was a great show. And, uh, yeah, Taya and uh, John Hennigan, uh, the fans love them. And I hope they could uh, get those contracts in and become members of the GFW family. So here's a million-dollar question. There's been various reports about there's 200 people there, there's 500 people there, there's 800 people there. Um, for someone that was there, if you had to, if you had to take a guess, your first guess you told me was 100, but I think you said it. <laughs> that was. No, the... You know, that was when I first got there, and okay. the first few matches were kind of the, the first two matches I'd say were. Uh, you know, a lot of the pictures that you saw online of people posting like empty rows and stuff like that. 
all of that was definitely posted uh, right at the beginning. And that's when I texted you about, uh, I think there's like 100 people here. I was worried because that was at the very beginning during the opening two matches. That that was uh, some of the lesser known talent. Uh, a lot of young uh, local independent guys got a chance to go out there and showcase themselves. But then after those two matches and, you know, all the big impact talent started wrestling, the crowd started coming in, more people were there, and the place started to get packed out. So th don't believe online that there were, you know, these low numbers of people. I would say at max there was about 400 people in there. That, that would be my guess. All right, good deal. You heard, um, it, you heard it right here, folks. I'd say about <laughs> 400 people. All right, good deal. And, you know, I was telling people online, they they basically filled out what they expected to fill out for the most part. It's not like they went to Madison Square Garden and were expecting a 1,000 people to show up. They, they got a venue in relation to what crowd size they thought they were going to have. You know, and uh, I'm, I'm, what they did with good this time around is I guess most of the tickets were pre-sale because I think uh, in the past they just kind of opened the doors and to see who was going to show up <laughs> type of thing and that didn't work out too well for them. But, um, man, good stuff. Uh, I appreciate kind of wrapping it up. Is, is there anything else you got on your mind about the show in general? Well, I mean, uh, all, all of the matches were great. Uh, the crowd was a little funny at points. And what I mean it by that is, all right, here's a the great example. Uh, Sanjay Dutt versus Trevor Lee. It, it was a great match, but... Throughout the whole match, it's like the crowd was really, really behind Trevor Lee no matter what. And you, you totally felt bad for Sanjay because it was supposed to be <laughs> – clearly they were trying to, you know, what they were trying to produce was, you know, Sanjay was supposed to be getting cheered and Trevor Lee was supposed to be getting booed. But throughout this whole thing, uh, you know, the crowd was just totally behind Trevor Lee. And he tried, he tried to defuse it like he did the classic, went up onto the top, acted like he was going to jump, jump down, you know, try to get the people to boo you. I was saying to my buddy, to defuse that, they should have had somebody do a run-in and, you know, build sympathy and have them totally, you know, beat on uh, Sanjay and then someone come in the ring and, you know, attack Trevor Lee and whoever would have ran out. Just something, some way to defuse it. But you know what? It's a live event. They weren't producing television. And they were probably keeping an ear to all of the crowd reactions. And they, you know, jotted down from that, you know, Trevor Lee. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the guy over here that the people are really loving. And, uh, you know, throughout the show, uh, you get a lot of those douchey fans that come out and they, che they cheer the heels the whole entire show and boo a lot of the baby faces. And I, that's kind of awkward to me, man. Even if, like, I, I, one of the, you know, the heel is my favorite. When I go to a show, and this is just me personally, I'm not, you know, don't don't write in the comments, oh, God, I can go, I can cheer whoever I want. I know, I know you can. You paid your ticket. But me personally, when I go to the shows, I'm going to cheer the baby faces and I'm going to boo the heels because I just get in the flow of things. You know what I mean, BQ? You'd be the same way when you go? I'm the exact same way. When I've gone to the Impact Zone, I mean, I'm a huge Sienna fan. I'm a huge Eli Drake fan, and I boo the shit out of them when I see them. <laughs> You know, I'm just, I just cheer for the baby faces. I remember one time when I was a kid, I was a kid, kid, kid. I mean, um, like in junior high and I had gone to an old WWF live show and I remember I actually didn't like a majority of the baby faces, but because I was just there, I was just, I, I remember cheering specifically for like, like I never liked Hulk Hogan as a kid, but I was cheering like crazy for him because that's just what i felt you like get, you, you do get, you get in the spirit of the show you know right you get in the spirit of the show and okay. you know at that time in the impact zone too so bottom line though bq the, the crowd was totally packed out uh they definitely made a ton of money all night like i said but the matches were great uh the highlights really to me uh lax versus mario bolkera and followed by that was a great match uh low-key versus drago awesome match uh taya, taya versus sienna that was fantastic. But the main event, awesome. Lashley, EC3, and Eli Drake versus Moose, John Hennigan, and James Storm. They tore the house down. It was your classic, you know, six-man tag. Everybody got their stuff, and the crowd was loving it. And then, like I said, after the show, we all lined up. Everybody in the place lined up, 20 bucks ahead. We went into the six-sided ring and took pictures with the winning team, and it was awesome. And all I can say is I really hope that Impact comes back to New York soon because I had a blast going to the show. 
That's great to hear, man. I really appreciate you uh, doing this with me, and this is something I'm going to be doing every live event. I'm going to get someone, and they're going to get on here, and we're going to talk about it. And I, I really want to get you know make sure the fans know what really happens there. And um, you know this, I was frustrated, man. I don't know how much you've gotten on Twitter today, but I hope that we don't have to deal with this bullshit every time that GFW does a live event because I I've been defending the damn company all day. And going at it with the trolls, and there's people that were they were there. Um, I think you mentioned something off off air that were haters of the company that bought a ticket. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's funny. It just goes to show you, some people though they're, they're just going to be so negative, they're going to be so negative about things, but they're still going to tune in and watch, and they're still going to go to the shows. I, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put anybody on the spot and do that whole thing. But bottom line. There were some people in there because I, dude, I was talking to fans the whole night, beginning to end. Oh, uh, well, I, I did meet plenty of people that listened to both of our podcasts. Believe it or not, that that was uh, surprising to me. But some of the fans I ran into were kind of, uh, we'll call them broken, brilliant soldiers, and it was just weird to me. Like you have negative things to say, but you paid your ticket, you came, you showed up. This isn't even a taping. This isn't a pay per view. You showed up to a house show, and it just goes to show you. Talk all you want. You're all, you're only blowing them up. You're only giving them hype, you know? You're only giving them the time of day. So fuck it. You know, people are going to talk. Impact just needs to ignore all that stuff and keep doing their thing and keep progressing. Keep just, you know, moving forward and getting better and better. And this is a great start to things, man. I'll tell you that. That last night's show that I attended, that was not a flop. That was not a dead-end event at all. That's great to hear. And, and you mentioned partnering up with the smaller indie events or smaller indie p- promotions. And I think that's really a really smart thing to do. You know, the, in North Carolina, they had the one show that it was, I don't remember the company, but it was them against the impact stars. And I think that general concept would actually do really well, but you know, there's yeah, sh- yeah. Well, cause when Jeff Jarrett started GFW before he came back to impact and, you know, brought the brands together, what he was planning out and just starting to do Doing all of those uh, cross-promoted indie events, going to local, you know, areas because you're going into places that already have established crowds, and you're bringing your top talent there, and everybody wins, and they, you know, they get to promote each other. Uh, and uh, some of the stuff even started before Anthem came in. You saw when they were producing the Broken Brilliant stuff, they were filming stuff on the scene, all around the the random, you know, independent promotions, and that's what they need to do. You gotta, you know, develop those relationships and build the bridges. And man, it, it's it's a good time to be a fan. It really is. What was unfortunate was that Allie and Braxton Sutter's flights got canceled, oh, so I know man, they missed that, that show. Bummer. Bummer. Yeah, um, it would have been cool to see that Allie reaction in, in real life. But I know they'll be at the shows tonight. So um, and I got someone coming on tomorrow, and we're gonna talk about the Saturday shows. Which uh, I, I don't think was quite as positive as the Friday, but, you know. Yeah. And that surprises me because, dude, going in, I thought that I was going to the smaller event and the Staten Island show the next day was going to be huge. Uh, yeah, I, I really just couldn't afford to go to both of them. Uh, you know, it, it happens. But it seems like from some of the stuff I'm reading online, like I went to the better show and, you know, lucky me. It was awesome. I, I mean, venue is a is a big deal. So I go to glory pro wrestling here that Michael Elgin runs. And the very first show I went to was, I don't know if it's at a VFW, but it, it was kind of like an event like that. And there was probably 300 people in there, but because you know, the chairs were all close to the ring and around the ring, like it looked like the place was jam packed. You know, the venue makes a big deal and looking at the, the pictures I'm seeing for Saturday, I would guess there's about 250 people there. There could be 300. Um, my guess is about 250, but it's, <laughs> when you put them in a stadium, it looks like about 50. Hey, so. man, it's hard to pack out a place that big. I've, uh, and it's not just an impact thing. I've been to Ring of Honor shows in ballparks, man. Ballparks aren't easy to pack out. I went to a, a Legends of Wrestling event at uh, City Field where the New York Mets play, and Dude, there was probably like 50 people there. It was sad. You know, it's totally hard to fill out ballparks. But you know what, man? It's it's really not about filling the place out. It's getting a decent, you know, a decent number. 
and, you know, just promoting the product and spreading your product and going town to town and touching the people. And dude, this is just the beginning. This is the first set of live events they've done in years, you know, and they just got to keep being consistent and keep doing it and keep moving forward. And hopefully, hopefully they end up by you soon over uh, wh- wherever you are. You're always bouncing around. I have no idea where <laughs> you're, you're stationed these days. <laughs> Illinois these days. Awesome. Um, but yeah, you know, you take each event, you learn from it, and then you, you move on to the next one. So, you know. Um, but, like, but like I said, you got one thing to take away from this whole weekend. You got you to gotta realize they are geniuses the way they were just pumping so much money out of the show. <laughs> yeah, and I would imagine some of that went to profit. And, you know, I guess, you know, for Eli Drake, for instance, I'm sure he, he got a cut, just, uh, you know, which kind of helped with his booking fee, so to speak. So, yeah. Uh, Good stuff, man. I really appreciate you coming on and talking about this. Uh, and, you know, uh, I want the listeners to hear it because, you know, you had you had to be there, and I don't want people to read negative things online and you know just paint a false picture, create a false narrative. I had to come on here and clear things up and let the fans know that the show was a success, and let's hope they keep being successful. All right, hell yeah! So subscribe here on the channel. We just surpassed 600 on the way to 700. So please subscribe on the channel. And then in the comments or the description, I should say, you're going to see a link for the Impact Heads YouTube channel. They're a new podcast. So uh, we want to give them some momentum and everything. So please subscribe there. And I will be covering Saturday night's show, which is tonight. Um, I will be covering that next. So definitely tune in. Thanks for checking in with us. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace.